and welcome back to the Potter Shop Hollow Tree Farm and my new HD 38 Max portable sawmill. Just got this thing put together uh, did a series on how to assemble the machine uh, in case you're interested in seeing what it takes. And now I'm ready to make my first cuts with it. I got a nice uh, black oak log here. It's been sitting around the yard for, I don't know, years I think. And I'm just going to cut it up for, uh, for stickers. So that's a good first project because you're always going to need them anyway. And if something's not quite lined up right and you make a miscut, no big loss. It's not like cutting walnut. So uh, we'll go through and make sure everything's ready for our cut. And then we'll uh, get started and see how it does. So you want to make sure that your blade is up to full tension. I remember the first time that I fired up a portable sawmill ever and there was nobody there to take me through the checklist and I didn't tension the blade, brought it up to full throttle and that blade came off the band wheel and I destroyed a blade before I even cut my first board. So the only good thing about that was there was nobody to see it happen. But we'll go ahead and bring it up to tension. Looks about right. We're going to take the shields off. Then pull it around a few turns. And we're going to make sure that that tracking is where it needs to be on both band wheels. <clears throat> looks okay on the non-operator side. On the operator side, it looks like it needs to come out just a little bit. And that's something you're just gonna have to work with, uh, especially on a new sawmill. This one may need to have that checked every time you uh, change the blade. We'll see, but in this case, definitely need to bring that tracking out a little bit. So I'm just gonna loosen that one full turn. Loosening it moves it out. And we'll give it another spin, see how it's looking. That's more what I had in mind. I think we'll be okay there. Then we're going to check to make sure we have a little bit of down pressure from those rollers. And the blade is pushing against it. And we have just a little bit of clearance between the blade and the ceramic guide. Looks about right. And of course we're checking both sides on that. And the back clearance between the back of the blade and the uh, collar on the roller. So, so all that looks good. All right, so if you're satisfied that everything's the way it needs to be, go ahead and put our shields back on. Of course, before you start the engine, you want to check it for gas and oil. So I've got my high-tech fuel gauge, and that is showing me, oh, not much. So I'm going to go ahead and refuel. And I use 89 octane ethanol-free gas in all of my small engines. That'll run us a while. And then on the oil, of course, that you check every time, at least once a day. I check the water, and when I add water, I add a combination of pine salt, about a half cup per tank of water. And that does a pretty good job of keeping any sap from sticking to the blade. So, worth doing. I love it. Starts nice and easy, little choke for a few seconds, and she's firm like a kit. All right, so I'm just going to run it up a little bit, bring it up to full throttle, make sure everything's working smoothly. OK, 
Okay, looks and sounds smooth. And back down to an idle, the blade is stopped. And we'll make our first cut. That'll be firewood. There, now you can see from this end how that's lined up, and that gives us a nice square cut. If you want to make sure that your cut is straight with the blade stop, you don't want it running when you do this, don't raise it. Bring it back at the same height where it was when you made that cut. Make to, then I watch that blade as it comes back and you can see perfectly straight. Couldn't be better. Now that we have the log squared up, this is a really good time to check our calibration. I had the mill set for ten and a half inches. Ten and a half inches here. And we are on this side just a shade, maybe a thirty-second of an inch shy of ten and a half. Well what that means is that the blade is at a little bit of an angle. And so we're going to adjust it and try and level that out so we're getting exactly the same measurement on both sides. I'll hold the yoke with the screwdriver and I'm going to go about one revolution with the 9 16th wrench here. We'll try it right there. If we need to go up or down a little bit, we'll adjust it some more, but this should get us a little bit closer. Another way to make sure you're cutting parallel is once you have four flat sides, turn the cant halfway around. Now, any if it was off one way, this will, this will give you a tapered cut unless everything is perfectly true.
All right, now for the moment of truth. Looks good. And if we can bring this around full circle, you just know that you're getting good, consistent cuts. There you go. Here's your black oak veneer. High dollar stuff. So now we have a perfectly calibrated sawmill. The height gauge is exactly right. And we also know that we're making perfectly parallel cuts because you can flip the board over, cut a veneer, you know it's gotta be right. So you want your log stops adjusted so when the blade is pushing against it, it is perfectly square with your cross spunk. Several different ways to do this, but the easiest I have found is check your cross spunk should be level. And your log stop should be perfectly plumb. So put the level to it push against it like there's a log on it and I can see that it needs to come the top needs to come in just a little bit so turn it in a little bit put, and I think it needs to go just a little bit more maybe another quarter turn There we go. I'll hold the bolt and turn the nut to lock it in place. And one final check. Perfect. First thing I like to do when I take the shield off is to put the palm of my hand on each bearing. If they feel a little warm, it's probably okay, but it's too hot to hold your hand against 
then that's a good sign that the bearing might be going out on you. I always keep a spare pair in the toolbox and I replace them as a pair. So if one's going bad, I'll go ahead and replace them both. So in the eight years that I've had the HD36, I've only had to replace the bearings twice, but I was glad I had a spare set so I could do it without having to have any downtime on the mill. Now these are open bearings. The manual says they need to be lubricated on a daily basis. To my way of thinking, anytime you make a blade change, you've got the shields off anyway, so that's a good time to do it. This little grease gun fits in the toolbox very nicely. About three pumps is all you need on both sides. It's also a good time to check your drive belt. So the tension feels good. I'm gonna spin it around looking for any cracks. Of course, being a new belt, there, there won't be. But at the same time, it's like the bearing. You want to replace it before it breaks. So we'll take the tension off the blade. Wear gloves. The old blade should just slip right off. And make sure everything feeds through the rollers the way they should. And if it doesn't slide on easily, just get it started and you can roll it right in place. Get it about where you want it. And you're ready to retension the blade. Looks about right. Then I'll rotate the band wheels just to check the tracking. And that's looking pretty good. And next, you're wanting to just make sure that the blade is riding correctly on the roller guides and that they're putting a little bit of down pressure on it. Then you want to rotate the band wheel a little more, make sure that the roller guides are spinning freely. If they're not for any reason spinning, when, you, when the blade passes under them, the blade will wear a flat spot on the roller guide and basically you're then going to have to replace it. But everything looks good. Finally, we've got the old blade. I've got a video on how to coil the blade. Uh, it's a lot easier to handle when it's coiled like this. I have three colors of pipe cleaners. Of course, the blue is new. The yellow means it's a good blade for resharpening, which is what we need for this one. And the, and the red one, or pink in this case, means I've hit metal with it, the blade's been destroyed, it's trashed. That way I can keep everything straight and I know the status of my blades. Well, thanks for stopping by and helping me check out my new sawmill. I tell you, I could not be more pleased with it. We did, I had a nice log to cut, which is always pleasant, but the things that I noticed the most right away are that electric winch for raising and lowering the saw head. And man, that saves the shoulder, big time. And I really appreciate that. It's very precise. Once you get used to it, you can get it exactly where it needs to be. The other thing that I liked about this mill is that it ha does have blade rollers. Uh, it's just, 
it holds the blade straight. You got to get everything calibrated and take your time and, and get it lined out. And once you do, uh, it's amazing. So, uh, yeah, I think I'll keep this sawmill. And I've got a lot more cutting to do, more videos to make. So until then, be safe and keep making sawdust.